Hi, if you're on this video, it's because you are reviewing the answers to the evolution tool found in lesson 2.2, where we are explaining malaria and sickle cell disease. To use this video, you're going to work at the pace that works best for you. Pause and rewind the video as often as necessary. Make sure that you are verifying your work against the explanations. If you need to, ask for clarification on the responses. You can talk to your teacher, talk to peers, people in your household. And then make sure you take the opportunity to explain your thinking uh, as you go along. This is a really great way to help you with the learning process. With the goals, uh, again, the first goal is to compare your work against the uh, explanations. The primary goals of the worksheet were to identify uh, selective forces that affect survival in an environment. Then also to identify variations of hemoglobin, genotypes and phenotypes and their frequencies based on the ecological factors. And your last goal was to identify and explain the interactions between the genotypes and ecology over time. The tool that we used to do this was the evolution tool, which you can see pictured here on the right hand side uh, that you filled out in um, lesson 2.2. I would recommend that you have something with which to take notes, um, a different color pen or pencil if you're taking notes directly on the evolution tool, uh, or a separate piece of paper, scrap paper, what have you, so that you can jot down any questions that you have uh, on there. Okay, so let's take a look at the first ecology. In the first ecology, we're saying that malaria is present in the environment. There are three variations that we're going to find. The first is going to be the AA genotype, and the phenotype for that is normal healthy hemoglobin. The person who has the AS genotype is going to be the person who has sickle cell trait. They carry the S allele. Um, they may not necessarily have symptoms uh, unless there's a low oxygen situation such as higher elevations, heavy activity, heavy exercise. Finally, the third variation is SS. The SS genotype is uh, the person who has sickle cell disease. That's the phenotype is sickle cell disease. When we look at the variations in the interaction with the ecology of malaria, we can see that the persons with AA genotypes, like right here, they don't get sickle cell disease, but they are susceptible to malaria. However, persons with the AS genotype, they don't have sickle cell disease symptoms, but they're also resistant to malaria. Finally, we have the individuals with the SS genotypes. They do have sickle cell disease, and they may not survive to be able to reproduce uh, if they don't have proper medical treatment. When we look at the first generation, when we're looking at gene pool frequency, so the gene pool frequency, again, is the frequency of the presence of alleles in a population over time. When we look at our first population, the parent population, we can see that it's 50% A, 50% S. So that means that half of the population, um, there's, there's a 50% uh, population frequency of A, 50% population frequency of the S allele. When we look at the, their offspring, when malaria is present in the environment, remember this is a, a parasitic uh, disease that can be fatal, we can see that there is actually an increase in the A allele. It jumps up to 68%. And there is a decrease in the S allele down to 32%. By the third generation, we do start to see some additional changes. The A allele decreases from 68% down to 61%, whereas the S allele starts to increase again, uh, going from 32% back up to 39%. So we can see that there are some changes going on. Uh, the A allele uh, increases initially from parent one to uh, the first offspring generation, and then starts to decline a little bit. And then for the S allele, you can see that there is a decrease uh, initially from the parent to the first generation, and then it starts to increase again. When we look at a different ecology, when malaria is not present in the environment, we have the same three variations, and the interactions between those variations are going to uh, differ slightly. Um, in the genotype AA, this person does not get sickle cell disease. They have healthy hemoglobin. 
The person with AS does not uh, exhibit generally symptoms of sickle cell disease. They have sickle cell trait. Um, and again, under uh, unless they have uh, low oxygen levels, they generally won't have any symptoms. Finally, with SS genotype, this is going to be a person who does have sickle cell disease and, again, without treatment may not survive to reproduce. We start off with the same percentage of our parent population of 50% A and 50% S. By the second generation, we can see that there is an increase of the A allele from 50 to 70%, but there is a decrease in the S allele from 50 to 30%. By the third generation, the A allele has increased from 70 to 81 percent. The S allele has decreased further from 30 percent to 19 percent. So putting our explanation together, we can see again there are three variations. The homozygous dominant is the AA genotype. This produces uh, normal healthy uh, hemoglobin proteins for red blood cells. We have the heterozygous AS, which is sickle cell trait. Um, generally not going to have symptoms of sickle cell disease unless we have a low oxygen environment. And then finally we have sickle cell uh, disease is the phenotype. The genotype is homozygous recessive SS. This is a person again who does have sickle cell disease. For the ecology, we can see that malaria and sickle cell disease do limit the ability of an individual to survive and reproduce. Um, uh, again, malaria is that mosquito-borne uh, disease. It's a parasitic disease uh, that affects the red blood cells and uh, can, uh, can be fatal. Sickle cell disease uh, changes the structure of the red blood cells and again, without uh, proper medical treatment can also be fatal. In regions with malaria, uh, heterozygous, uh, Heterozygous genotypes, the AS individuals, have an advantage uh, because of their resistance to malaria. Whereas in areas without malaria, the AA and AS individuals survive, whereas um, uh, they're able to outcompete the individuals with the SS genotype. When we look at the interaction between the two, um, we're looking at the variations interaction with the, interacting with the ecologies. We can see here that if we have um, a person who has the uh, homozygous dominant, so that's two normal healthy genes, they're going to produce uh, healthy red blood cells. In an area with um, a risk of malaria infection, there is a probability that they will get malaria um, and they have a higher susceptibility to malaria. However, in an area that has um, uh, a low risk or no risk of malaria, they're going to be very uh, healthy individuals. When we have the heterozygous combination, um, the, the healthy gene plus the sickle cell gene, you can see that in uh, areas where there's high infection rates of malaria, that they're going to be healthy because again, that AS combination provides a resistance to malaria. They'll also be healthy in areas with low risk or no risk of malaria. When we look at the sickle cell uh, genotype for sickle cell disease, that's that SS or homozygous recessive genotype, we can see that in both low and high uh, risks for malaria that they are susceptible to sickle cell disease, uh, which could again, without proper medical treatment, could lead to sickle cell anemia and uh, may not be able to survive to reproductive age. What that means is that the, uh, there's going to be a very low frequency of S alleles in the population um, uh, in areas without malaria because there's no benefit to the S allele. And we saw that in the data uh, on the previous slides. So the S allele is going to, uh, the gene frequency of the S allele is going to decrease um, over time. We've gotten to a point where we can check our understanding. You've compared your work uh, against the explanations that were provided here. Uh, you've identified selective forces that affect survival in an environment. You've identified variations of hemoglobin genotypes and phenotypes, as well as their frequencies based on ecological factors. 
And finally, you've identified and explained the interactions between the genotypes and the ecology over time. If you haven't already, uh, complete the row on your learning tracker tool uh, for lesson two. And uh, thank you so much for your time and dedication. I hope this helps. If you still have questions, please make sure that you reach out to your teachers uh, and have a beautiful day. Thank you so much.